Chapter 8 OTDR Operation OTDR stands for Optical Time Domain Reflectometer. This is an important piece of optical test equipment that will measure the length of a fiber and indicate light loss locations. By plotting the power reflections on the y-axis and distance on the x-axis, an OTDR trace or scan reveals the key information of light losses, reflectance, and distance. OTDRs have evolved to satisfy specialized user needs and now include extra capabilities to enhance network testing. Our first three-minute video of the Thunderbolt nicely illustrates the basic OTDR function and the extras. In this video, you will get a quick rundown of our Thunderbolt OTDR. As you may know, an OTDR is a very valuable piece of test equipment out in the fiber optic testing field. It can give you the distance of your cable as well as physically determine where and how severe any faults are along that line. For example, it can tell you where there is a bad fusion splice or where you have a highly reflective event caused either by an old mechanical splice or a mated connector pair. The Thunderbolt has seven critical fiber optic tests and they are an OTDR, a power meter, a visual fault locator, an end of fiber checker, a gigabit analyzer, reporting software, and an optional connector inspection probe. So let's go over all these applications. To navigate around the main menu screen, use the rotary dial wheel in the top right hand corner of the unit or simply press the arrow keys to highlight the application you wish to enter. To enter the application, press enter at any time or depress the rotary key. Here's the OTDR functioning with a loss, distance, ORL readings, as well as an event table displaying all the events, whether they are reflective or non-reflective. The power meter, which is included on the unit, works as any power meter would. You just hook it up, take a reference and start testing. The end of fiber checker allows you to conduct a quick 5 second test that gives you the distance of the cable, the amount of attenuation occurring, as well as the dB per kilometer loss that is occurring on the cable as well. The gigabit analyzer allows you to find out if your cable is physically able to handle 1 gig or 10 gig network traffic. The VFL, or Visual Fault Locator, is a simple red laser that has about 4 to 5 kilometers of range to do a quick continuity test on shorter runs or to find macro bends or breaks in your cable. The Project Mode is there to set up a project if you're going to be testing multiple cables of the same length in the same location and it organizes all the data easily and effectively. As you can see, our Thunderbolt OTDR can handle a range of different testing applications in the fiber optic testing field. Once again, this OTDR can measure your distance and identify physical faults in your cable. If you would like pricing or a quote, please contact FIS by phone or visit our website at fiberinstrumentsales.com. Our next two-minute video will quickly restate the Thunderbolt's features, but will go into more detail explaining OTDR operation, the power meter, and real-time features. The ability to plug an OTDR into an installed network and determine its capability of handling a 1 gigabit or 10 gigabit Ethernet signal is an impressive capability. Select the fiber type and the OTDR's measurement of distance, losses, and reflection values are automatically compared for you against the fiber's operational requirements. Our one and a half minute video of the Gigabit Analyzer function explains further. The great thing about the Thunderbolt OTDR is that it encompasses an onboard power meter, a visual fault locator, an end of fiber line checker, as well as a gigabit analyzer. When you power on the unit, this will be the main menu screen that appears. To navigate through the different applications, simply turn the rotary wheel or press the arrow keys to make your selection. Right now I'm going to talk to you about the gigabit analyzer. The gigabit analyzer should not be confused with an ethernet tester. Rather, it checks physically if the fiber can withstand 1 or 10 gig signals. 
What the Thunderbolt has done is it has programmed in various cable manufacturer specification and compares them to distance, attenuation, and back reflection. So before running your test, simply choose the type of fiber you're going to be testing and then select one or 10 gig ethernet signals As you can see, the Gigabit Analyzer uses those three measurements and gives you a pass-fail for each one. As you can see, the Thunderbolt OTDR encompasses everything a technician would need to certify a fiber optic network. If you need any more information or want a quote for pricing, please contact Fiber Instrument Sales on the phone or check our website at fiberinstrumentsales.com. John Bruno's technical tip talks about testing a fiber link with an OTDR in both directions or bidirectional averaging. Discussed is the use of pulse boxes and how only the bidirectional average loss of a splice or any event is the most accurate measurement. Welcome back, Fiber Instrument Sales, Ask Bruno, John Bruno here, another Ask Bruno tech tip. What do we got for you today? Well, today we're going to talk about an issue when we talk about OTDR testing. Just recently got this Ask Bruno question from a customer out in Tennessee doing certification testing. The customer rejected all of his tests, asked, us, asked them to do it again. He said, reason we're rejecting is because we didn't use a launch cable or a pulse suppressor on either end of my task fiber. Asked John, really, why would I have to do this when I already had a launch cable at the beginning? The contract says he wants a bidirectional test, so I'm going to take that launch cable and go to the other side and test back. Obviously, I'm going to get it on the second side. So what we're saying is that end connector, it, you can't test because there's no fiber between that and the end. But his theory was, well, we're going to have, when we go back down to test in the other direction, right, A to B and then B to A, well, we'll be covering that connector in that second test. So why did they reject the test? I've seen people reject tests because no, they didn't use any launch cables, and that makes a lot of sense. But really, this customer knew what they were asking for. The true attenuation of any OTDR event, so any bend, any splice, any connectors, is not the value in the single direction. The reason, the primary reason they ask for bidirectional testing is so that we can do the bidirectional average of that event. Most of us don't do this. Most of us don't realize this. If we look at the 10 commandments of OTDR testing, this is gonna be number one. Thou shall bidirectionally test all of our events. The OTDRs, some of the uh, more advanced softwares, uh, will actually give you an option so when we test, we, we can tell it how many fibers we're testing, location A and B, and when we run through that test, when we go to the other side, we switch B to A and it will reverse the naming process, and then we can merge those files together with the software, and it will give you your bidirectional average so we can do pass-fail. So why aren't people putting boxes on the other end? You know, several reasons. Number one, they feel like they're testing it anyways because of their bidirectional. They don't realize the reason that bidirectional is written there is for the average. Problem with only testing each end one way is we can't average for the attenuation. Um, the other reason, I mean, let's be honest, we don't want to pay somebody sitting on the other end and just basically moving a box all day. He has no test equipment in his hands, right? So. I can understand why we'd want to leave it out, but if we're going to be sticklers, if we have a customer that's a stickler, the true way to certify any OTDR event is with the bidirectional average. Hence, we need two boxes, and we have to have a guy on the other end moving that box all day. If we follow OTDR testing to the letter of the law, that's why the his customer rejected the test and asked for the two launch cable test. Hopefully this helps. I hope maybe you might we might have changed some of the ways you might do the OTDR testing and maybe we can get away from having this issue happen to you. Um, you know, we want to teach you every proper procedure there is and this is definitely one of the big ones. So, thanks again for tuning into my videos. I appreciate it all. Thanks for watching this video. There are more free training videos. Go to the playlist by clicking the top right.